too can be a great guardian. Follow me! Get them! An ambush! I bet you didn't count on this! <laughs> Hold on! Come on, Sauron. We're not finished yet, boy. Ever since laying my eyes on the trailers for Legend of the Guardians, The Owls of Gahul, I was amazed and excited. Seeing that Zack Snyder, director of 300 and Watchmen, takes a direction on a kid's movie left me feeling ecstatic. I was so thrilled on seeing this movie that on most nights it kept me awake, and so much so that I got into the books the movie was based on. For many reasons to come by, it mostly felt like a dream coming to life to me for an animated film. Something in which The Lion King, The Secret of Nim, and Watership Down had, other than hand-drawn animation. But let's not get too far here. Even though this is my most anticipated film of the year, now that I finally saw it of its release date, does it live up to the hype? Yeah, but not entirely. Legend of the Guardian centers on a barn owl named Soren. He's one day taken away from his family and held captive at an orphanage where young owls get hypnotized by something called Moon Blinky. It's used in order to make an army. Soren also learns that there's a magnetic rock material called Flex, in which the holder of the orphanage plans to use it to, you guessed it, take over the world. Of course! Though spoiling more of the film, Soren and his little friend he makes, named Gilfie, escape miraculously to find the Guardians, held at a big tree located across sea. These Guardians have always been rumored all over the world by their stories in which Soren has a strong admiration to. Now I read the first book, and I'm in the middle of the second one. The movie is based on the first three out of the fifteen in which Catherine Lasky wrote. In comparison, I felt somewhat disappointed with the changes that were made. But because these changes suited with the story to not confuse the audience or the meander, I'm willing to forgive it. The story on its own, however, does move pretty quickly, and it gets pretty difficult to catch up. It does appear very generic, something you would find from Lord of the Rings or the Knight's Round Table from King Arthur. Despite its unoriginality, Legend of the Guardians is very creative on the articulate side of the story. I mean, how often do you see movies centering on owls? How often do you see flying creatures using Dark Age weapons and armor? Nonetheless, the story does have its flaws, but I think it's well written and entertaining. I don't generally talk about visuals in movies, and even though this will beat you over the head with what I'm about to say, I just have to get this off my chest. The animation alone is beautiful beyond belief. It's so realistically detailed, so smooth and colorful, that it easily takes my breath away. It's such a work of art. Zack Snyder has been known for this attempt in his previous films, and this is no exception. Furthermore, there are several action scenes in which involve flight sequences, and they definitely work in this movie. They are intense and energetic. There are also some harsh and dark scenes in which suit the film so well, though it may seem a little harmful to younger viewers. Now, don't take this the wrong way by my hype. It's not a perfect movie. Other than the changes in the story, there was a montage where Soren and the other main characters are being trained by the Guardians. In this montage, there was some pop song play, and to be honest, this was way out of place. This is a fantasy. This is a setting where there are talking animals. Do you honestly think a pop song is going to fit in this movie? I don't think so. Montages in general are very cliché, but here, it's one of them at its worst. Also, I found the humor pretty weak. Digger and Twilight are used as comic relief compared to the books, but the jokes are owl puns, and they just sound pretty stupid. Despite the many flaws to encounter, I loved this movie. This is a beautiful, epic, well-executed movie in which I have been waiting for. This is the kind of movie I like to see for a children's film. It's at this point Pixar would have some serious competition. Sadly, it won't compete well with Toy Story 3, but I still enjoyed it nonetheless. Many will argue that it's not as good as the book, and that's fine. But the film on its own is still fun to watch. I had a great time with it, and I'm sure a lot of other viewers out there might have as well. For Legend of the Guardians, four and a half stars.